Like the title suggests, in today's video we have the Ergo P6 budget CPU cooler. This is a newcomer to the market, but it's actually worth your money or not. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to install this on the AM4 platform. We also have temperature testing against some other CPU coolers in this price point. There will be timestamps in the description below. If there's a certain part of the video you'd like to jump to, you're more than welcome to do so. Also, some other links down there that may interest you, and don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff on your way down in that description box. But without wasting a lot of your time, let's flip you over and we'll show you how to install this on the AM4 socket. Alright all, and to be able to get this heat sink installed here, we got everything laid out here we need. We got the heat sink itself, the fan. We have the AMD, AM4 brackets here. We also have a number two Phillips screwdriver. Also have my extension bed here for my screwdriver because it is a taller heat sink. I do have my spatula here for spreading the thermal paste, which we'll get into that in a little bit. And here we have the screws that holds on the brackets onto the heat sink. And we also have the included thermal paste. Now this is pretty well everything you should need for this job. You may need a zip tie or two if you wanna zip tie the cables up to make them look a little bit better, which will come to the end. And of course, over here on the side, we do have the motherboard that's already prepped and ready for installation. So let's get into this and I'll show you how to get this installed. To start out the installation here, we've got the heat sink. We have the screwdriver with the regular number two Phillips on it. We have the two brackets for the AM4 socket. And we also have the four little screws here that are gonna attach the brackets to the heat sink. And as you can see, there is a piece of paper here that we will have to remove before we install this onto the motherboard. We'll take care of that in a little bit. Unlike most traditional heat sinks usually these little brackets go on top of these like this then you put the screws down through it but on this one it's a little bit different these actually go underneath of it like so um it's a little bit of a different concept but it may work out all right as long as we get them on right it's all that counts and right down here where these the cold plate meets the rest of the metal here there is a little little indent in the metal and you have a little indent on the brackets themselves and they kind of slide in together. And when you install these, you want to make sure the screw heads is facing up towards the heat sink, of course. Just like so. Since we got this one already started here, we're going to go ahead and put the screws down through it. We're going to take and hold the bracket up against the bottom of it here. We're going to take the screwdriver with the magnetic tip. I do recommend magnetic tip for this. Just put the screw down through the hole and start screwing it down. Like everything else I do, I'm just going to get this one started. Then we'll take the second screw here. And we will get it started. Since the other ones are already started, we'll go ahead and tighten this one down all the way. Then we'll come over here and we'll tighten this one down the rest of the way. All right, guys, I don't know if you can tell that on camera or not, but that screw actually ain't going all the way down in there. And I can't get it to go no further. Um, I'm actually stripping the head out of it while trying to install it. But it is below the cold plate there, so I don't think you're interfere with anything. All right, we'll flip it over here and we will get this uh, other one same way and by talking talk about these brackets they do slide depending on if you want am3 or am4 and it is is not clear in the manual or on the bracket itself where you need them for which one so we'll have to make sure we line them up and they're in the correct location whenever we go to put it onto the motherboard but we'll go ahead and get this one installed as well here put it down there in the spot get that one started and then we'll get this one here started. Go ahead and tighten this one down. Then we will tighten this one down. And again, on this side over here, this screw is not wanting to go all the way in. I'm actually rounding it off, trying to get it down in there, but it is set below a cold plate, so it shouldn't have no effect on the cooling of it. By looking where these screw heads is, we're gonna take this fan off to be able to even get to those. And something else I noticed, if you look down through here, the way them screws, set back underneath them fins it's going to be hard to get this thing to tighten down on the motherboard um a lot of the heat sinks actually have a little groove in them in the fins that runs down through here for this reason but this one don't seem to have them grooves to get your screwdriver down in there and over here if you don't take that fan off there's no way you're going to get a screwdriver into that screw so you're going to definitely have to take these fans off take this fan off to be able to get to these all right so let's get the motherboard over here and we'll get this prepped if it's a brand new build and you're installing this cooler, you will have these two little clips here that we will, we will have to take off. 
Or if you're replacing your current cooler, you have to take your current cooler off. Take these plastic brackets off, it's pretty simple. Take the two screws out of each bracket and lift them up off. Um, I would recommend holding on to these plastic brackets and the screws because you never know what the future may hold and there is some coolers that will actually utilize them brackets. So you definitely want to hold on to the brackets. All right, since we got the brackets off of it, we're going to go ahead and take the fan off of us. We're just going to sit down here and see if we can get these posts lined up right where we need them. Okay, guys. And as I said before on these brackets, it really don't tell you which position you need these in for the AM4 mount. But by test fitting it, they do need to be all the way slid all the way up towards the heat sink itself to be able to make contact with the post points. Um, before we actually get it installed, though, we will have to put thermal paste on it. All right, guys, now we're going to be installing the thermal paste. And yes, there is different schools of thought on this. Some people say just put a little daub right there in the middle and leave it go. But me personally, I like to spread mine out. So I'm going to take my little spreader here and I'm going to spread it out some. I spread mine out just to make sure I get good coverage and that the CPU is completely covered. And also, if I put too much on there, which a lot of people say I use too much, but if I put too much on it, I can always take the excess off to where I don't have too much. So I'm just going to spread this out here, and we'll be back after I get it spread out here. All right, now since we've got thermal paste on the CPU, since we do have the fan off, and we're going to have the fan on this side, so you need this side with the cable coming off of it to be facing towards your AM slots. Which you could put it the other way and put the fan as an exhaust, but I recommend to have pull the air through the heat sink and out the back. You want to make sure you pull this label off here. It says please remove before in installation. So you definitely want to make sure you pull this off. If not, your CP will overheat. So we want to make sure we get this pulled off. There we go. Flip it around here, set down on here, get our screw holes lined up. There we go. And this is where the six inch extension bit comes into play at. You want to do this in a bit of a cross pattern. You just want to get it started here. A few turns on it. Okay. Then we're going to rotate it around here. Get the optic corner here started. Okay, then we'll jump up here and do this one since we're already on this side. Then we're going to jump down here and do this one. Okay, since we got them all stored, we'll go back to this one and do a few more turns. And we'll jump over here and do this one a few. And they're actually, they're actually fairly easy to hit these screws. When I first put it on, I didn't think it was going to be so easy to hit these screws. But on the AM4 socket, it ain't too bad. You do have to put your screwdriver a little bit of an angle to get on correctly, but it ain't too awful bad. Okay, now since we've got them all pretty well snug, now we're just going to go back and snug these, snug them back down in the same pattern we've been following. Okay, I think that'll do pretty good. Alright guys, and since we got that, they're put on. Got that got it installed now. We've got the power port of it installed we gotta put the fan back on gotta make sure you plug in this ARGB that way the ARGB here on the top of it works correctly it does have a little notch on it, it is a three pin connector that does have a notch on it you gotta line up that up on there just like so it may be a little hard for me to do here but uh, take your fan clips same ones that came off of it Hold the fan up there in the spot. Pull it back and click it in. See if I can get you a view of the other side here where I do it. Put these over here. Pull it back here. Get it clicked in. Just like so. Flip it back around here, make sure this side's clicked in there good. 
which it looks like it is. Once you get the fan put back on here, you do have to deal with the wiring, which we do have two cables here. We have the four pin PMW fan header that hooks into your fan header on your motherboard, which is labeled. My motherboard's a little gray one right here, says CPU fan beside it. Just line up your notches, slide it down on. Just like so. Make sure it's nice and down in there. And now your your installation of the ARGB may be different than mine. But it does have a little pigtail here. That way you can daisy chain your ARGB header if you need to. But in the test system we're using today, we don't have no other ARGB in the system. So I'm just going to take this over here to the ARGB header on my motherboard, which is a 5 volt, 3 pin. Going to line it up. Slide it down there, dropping them pins. There's like so. And of course, you may want to take some zip ties or something and kind of tie these back. But you want to make sure that they ain't going to be in your AM stick location. That way, you can still get your AM installed. You may want to take some kind of zip tie or something and hold these back, or maybe you'll be running behind your motherboard, then running back up to the motherboard. Um, that's all going to depend, but as long as you've got the CPU fan header connected and you do have the ARGB connector connected where you need it to be, you should be good to go at this point. So that's pretty well the installation. This is how you get the installation done on this CPU cooler. Let me get reset up here and we'll talk about how the performance is and uh, what my final thoughts is on this little cooler. Alright, so I showed you how to install this on the AM4 platform. Let me flip you over here and we'll run down through the ports to make up today's test bed. To start out with, we have the AMD Ryzen 5600G. For the motherboard, we have the Gigabyte B550 MDS3H motherboard. For the RAM, we have G-Skills ripped off 5 series 16 gig, 28 gig modulars, running at 3600 MHz speed. For the storage, we have the Silicon Power 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. To power the whole system, we do have the EBGA 500BA 80 plus bronze non-modular power supply. For the case, we have the Fractal Design Focus G case. While we're talking about the case, I did leave the two pre-installed fans in it, but I did add one to the back, that way we have an exhaust fan. I think this is pretty indicative of the way most people would be running the system. Just looking at an air cooler in this price point. As far as the air coolers we tested in today's video, we have the AMD Wraith Stealth that comes with the 5600G. That's the stock heat sink out of the box. We have the Ergo Shadow Max CPU cooler. We also have the Cooler Master Hyper T4. We have the Vitro V5 Black CPU air cooler. And the cooler in today's video is the Ergo P6 CPU air cooler. So that's the ports that make up the system that we used in today's testing. All right, as far as the way I run the components, I do enable the XMP profile for the RAM. The rest of the components, as far as the CPU and iGPU, they are at the out of box settings. And yes, the way I run my test is an unrealistic workload. I do run Heaven Benchmark in the background, which maxes out the iGPU. And then I run Cinebench R23 for the half hour stress test. That puts the CPU cores at 100%. This is the most heat that I can get this processor to produce. I think it's pretty fair comparison between the different air coolers and see how they perform. I do run the test three different times. Then I take the averages of the max and average temperatures to come up with my numbers. So let's flip you over here and we'll see how the Ergo P6 air cooler does against the competition. All right, here we are with the charter with the temperature testing results we got. We have the Wraith Stealth. The max temperature was 95.6. The average temperature was 93.3. The Shadow Max cooler was 80.8. .8. The average temperature is 78.7. The Ergo P6 comes in at 74.4 degrees max and a 70.8 average temperature. The Vitro V5 came in at a max temperature of 71.1. .1. The average temperature was 68.9. The Hyper T4 max temperature was 69.8. The average temperature was 67.7. If you look at these top three from the Ergo P6, the Vitro V5, and the Hyper T4, these are all within a degree or two of each other. So I think that could be chalked up to the margin of error because there's a lot of different variables that could have a, have a small effect like that with one or two degrees difference. So my final thoughts on this cooler. 
Is it actually worth the money? I don't believe it is. If you haven't seen the unboxing and overview and the rundown of the specs of it, I'll put a quarter up here for you if you'd like to check out that video. But even in that video, I wasn't very happy with the build quality of this cooler. I think it's cheaply made. The fan, the fan is pretty cheaply made. The fins on the heat sink itself is pretty flimsy, pretty thin. And the and with the issues that I had with getting the bracket screwed down to the heat sink, I wasn't too happy with that either. And it seems funny that the holes that I had the problem with was both on the same side of the mounting clips. So I think that was just within the manufacturer's error or they didn't get them screw holes quite threaded quite right when they threaded them holes. But I think it's a little bit too cheaply made for the price that you're paying for it. Whenever you have the, something like the Vitro V5 out there, it costs a little bit less money than this one with about the same performance or a little bit better performance i think the vitro v5 looks just as nice as this one does even though this one's got that little bit of extra or argb on top of it with the plate that covers the heat sink i think the vitro v5 would be a better option if you're looking to buy one of these heat sinks don't forget to do all that fun youtube stuff on your way out of here you all have a good day and i'll see you in the next video or live stream